Hey there everybody, Sage here again, founder of the School of Evolutionary Herbalism, and welcome back to your final lesson class post here on your kind of foundational introduction to the world of evolutionary herbalism. And I sure hope you've been enjoying some of the episodes I've been sharing with you over the last like, geez, I guess like six weeks or so now. And I've been learning something new, getting some new perspectives and insights into my approach to herbal medicine. Um, but this, this one here, this one's more about you, right? Um, well, I mean, it's all about you, but this one specifically is uh, something I like to talk about to help you get a little bit more clarity on your plant path. You know, I love the analogy of the plant path in terms of the life of an herbalist. You know, it's kind of this it's kind of a metaphor, but it's also kind of not. It's also kind of literal, right? In that our lives as herbalists is traversing the landscapes of the earth, the mountains and the fields and the forests and the valleys and the deserts and the rainforests and, you know, wandering through these pathways of the earth and collecting medicine along the way. And we gather plants and we learn the plants and we make medicine from the plants and we heal ourselves along the way. And, and, you know, our, for some that healing reaches a point where we can't keep everything that we've learned to ourselves anymore, right? <clears throat> that it's not just about us, that it's about helping other people and that all that medicine that we've gathered now becomes something that we offer to the world and to the people to share our the, the profound healing and transformation that we receive through the plants to be able to share that with other people. And, um, and, you know, as we walk along that pathway, we encounter downed trees and we got across rivers and sometimes we wander off trail and sometimes the pathway becomes obscured and, and we don't know which way to, or sometimes the path forks and we don't know which way to go. And it's for moments like those that this, um, sharing this video with your, with you here today, because I really, if there's one thing that I personally, I need in my life, <laughs> um, every now and then it's some clarity. And sometimes we're, it's hard to get clarity for ourselves because we're just in it. You know, we're in our lives, we're in our plant path. We can't always pull up and look at the big picture and say, oh, where's that pathway headed? Or where's that pathway headed? Or that's the best place to cross the river, right? Sometimes we need someone from the outside to help us gather that clarity. At least I know I do from time to time. And so this is all about looking at your plant path, where you, where you are at on your development uh, as becoming an herbalist and identifying kind of where you are right now and kind of looking forward, like, where do you want to go? Where do you want to take this? What is your, what is the goal? What's the, what's the thing that you're working towards? What's all of this working towards for you so that you can make good decisions, right? And orient your studies and your practice to move you closer towards that goal ideally more quickly, right? I think if there's one thing most humans share in common, it's that we we want to reach our goals as, as quickly and painlessly as possible. Um, you know, not to say there won't be struggle and challenge along the way. I think that's inherent to being a human being, but um, nonetheless, if what I share with you here can help provide some of that clarity, then that is a good thing. So I like to think of like, first of all with this is like, what level are you at, you know? Um, Generally, I think a lot of people tend to think of, you know, if we were to segment it into categories, you know, you've kind of got your beginning, uh, intermediate and more advanced stages of development. And it's not these aren't hard lines. I think we all kind of you know, move back and forth between them, depending on the situation, you know, sometimes you're really advanced and maybe treating digestive complaints, but then you get a client that's got endocrine problems. And then you're like back to beginner and you're like, oh, what's the anatomy of that again? Like, right. So it's not like you're, once you reach one stage, you're there forever. You know, I remember something that really struck me from the, the herbalist, David Winston. He says, uh, he says, yeah, you know, I've been, you know, practicing herbal medicine clinically for, I don't know, 40 years or something. I don't know. I don't remember what the number is, but you know, 
bit longer than I've been alive. And he goes, and at this stage, I feel comfortable and confident calling myself an advanced beginner, you know, uh, which is very humbling, right? Where I'm like, wow, like that guy really knows his stuff. He's a great herbalist. And uh, he just now considers himself like a, a, an advanced beginner. And I think that really goes to show how much there really is to learn on the plant path. But if I was to break it down into the categories, you know, how do you tell what stage you're at? Well, at the beginner stage, you know, these are the things that I think are really important to focus on. And kind of following some of the frameworks I've been sharing with you, uh, you know, over over the past um, number of weeks. First of all, I think it's very important to, to really start to understand your core medicinal virtues in plants. That is, how do the plants function within the body and whether that's from like a western perspective and you're studying herbal actions whether that's from a tcm perspective and it's understanding you know um they treat you know liver chi um stagnation or they treat you know um you know heart yin deficiency whatever the power you know they treat an excess of vata in the nervous system you know whatever paradigm it is you really need to get a gra a solid grasp on those fundamental core ways that plants are operating within the human body. And I think coupling that with energetics is very, very important. So from the Western perspective, not just learning, oh, these herbs are demulcent and these herbs are expectorant and these herbs are diaphoretic, but really coupling that with the energetics. Um, I think on the human side of things, it's good to start to get an understanding of the human body. So I believe that having a, a little bit of a grasp on anatomy and physiology is very good. Um, if we're looking at it from a Western perspective, again, Eastern perspective or other traditional perspectives, you know, focusing on their approach to how the human body functions, right? We, if we're gonna, if we're gonna use herbs to help another person, we should probably know, like, a, what the herbs are doing in the body, um, and b, how the body functions and malfunctions. So, I think having a good grasp of you know, having a systems approach, you know, uh, oftentimes the way A&P in, in Western A&P is taught, it's very separate, right? Uh, they don't really show how the organ systems integrate with one another, how they influence one another very well, at least in my experience with it, as well as, uh, you know, the, the, you know, very in-depth um, A&P course that I did while I was studying at Bastyr, which was like a year and a half, I think, of a and uh, college level a and but also just uh, textbooks on a and that I've read and what I've heard other people talk about their education in anatomy and physiology. It's very separate. Um, systems study very separately. And I think it's very good to uh, approach it with a very integrated approach, seeing how these different systems interweave together. Um, and then, you know, when you're in the beginning phase, I think like really getting a sol solidity in just principles of vitalism, principles of what it means to be holistic in your approach, um, getting a solid grasp on, you know, the, tr the traditional model that you want to follow in your approach, whether that's Unani Tib or Greek Galenic medicine or Ayurveda or TCM or Tibetan medicine or North American herbalism or any of the vast number of folk traditions and systems that there are, you know, getting a solid foundation in, in your kind of grounded in your approach, I think is something that's very important in the initial phases of uh, your herbalism journey. So those are kind of the main things that I think are the focus when you're at the beginner's phase. And, you know, to make things exciting, I think it's good to study Materia Medica, right? Uh, learn some herbs, right? Of course, that's what gets us on the plant path to begin with, right? We wanna learn about plants. So, so learning and studying Materia Medica, I think is an important part at that beginner stage as well. Moving into the intermediate, I think this is where we get more into okay, we understand our herbs holistically, we understand people holistically, well now how do we start to bring them together? So this is where we're starting to understand assessment principles, like how do you work with a person? 
So we're looking at how do you start, you know, doing an interview and an intake? How do you start um, determining what's going on with that person, right? What the, is that the root cause of the problem that they're facing? And through that, starting to learn how to assemble formulas, right? Putting together herbal formulas, compounding herbs together to create a, a, a new being, a new medicinal being, right? That will address their, their primary complaints and the problems that they're struggling with um, and ideally at the root cause level. And through that, having some practice clients to me is a really important thing to do at the intermediate phase. Um, you really got to start getting your feet wet and working with people, whether that's a family member, a friend, a coworker, you know, when you get to that point where you feel like you have a decent enough understanding of how the body functions and malfunctions, uh, how you got a good grasp on some Materia Medica and how the herbs work, you got a pretty good understanding of how to assess a person and do an intake and start working with some people, right? Start, start putting it to practice. Um, that's really the only way to learn. You can't just learn all of that from books and uh, from lectures. You got to just do it. That's the only way to learn it. And then the other important piece here at the intermediate phase is studying your Materia Medica. Um, it's very important to continue learning your herbs, refining your understanding of herbs. You know, even the most advanced herbalists in the world, guess what? They're still learning about calendula. They're still learning about yarrow. They're still learning about chamomile and peppermint, right? The, the herbs that a lot of times people think is beginner herbs, I, I, to me, there's like to me, kind of, there's no such thing as a beginner herb. Like, I think, you know, maybe in the sense of like, okay, these herbs are gentle and safe and you're not gonna like really harm anyone with them. I guess in that sense, there's such a thing as a beginner herb, but that doesn't mean that you stop learning about them. That doesn't mean that they're not powerful medicines. That doesn't mean that, you know, you've surpassed those plants. Those are beginner plants and I am advanced now and I only use low dose herbs. Like. No, like the, 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 the beginner mild plants are still really good to know and everyone is still learning about them, myself included. So uh, studying Materia Medica is, uh, is a lifelong journey on the plant path. And I think this is something very important to continue to focus on at the intermediate stage. And the advanced stage is really where, you know, to me, this is where you're getting more into like being an herbalist is what you do day in, day out. This is your life. This is your career. This is how you support yourself and your family. And so at the advanced stage, it really gets into like, how do you set up your practice? How do you set up your own dispensary? Learning how to work with clients more like, you know, doing good follow-ups and doing good formulations and really taking good case notes and having a support system too, to continue like a community of people that you can bounce ideas off of and bring your cases to and say, hey, you know, I've got this client, this is what I did, it's really working great or it's not working really great, what do y'all think, right? That's a really useful thing at that advanced stage. So you're not all alone, you don't feel like you're going at it all alone. And to, to me, the advanced stage is, is when you are really um, have developed a, a degree of confidence and competence in your work as an herbalist to be able to see people consistently and follow up with them and, and get good healing results. Now, of course, at this stage, you're continuing to refine your assessment capabilities and interview skills. You're still refining your understanding of pulse and tongue evaluation. You're still getting better at your formulations, right? It's not like you abandon all the stuff in the previous text or stages, right? It's like I said, you can have a super advanced herbalist that gets a really complicated case or some disease they've never even heard of. And you're right back at the beginning, right? And you're like going back to the anatomy and physiology books. You're going back to learning your Chinese organ system patterns, or you're go digging into another level of Ayurvedic theory to understand like what is going on with this person that's causing the problem. So I can figure out what type of remedy is going to be corrective for that person and help them to heal. And the last thing that I think is very important at the advanced stage is learning Materia Medica. Continuing to study your Materia Medica, like I said, even the most advanced herbalists are still learning chamomile and peppermint and nettles. 
So these are kind of, you know, again, these are super high level, super general, um, but hopefully that helps you understand a little bit more like where you're currently at on your plant path and what some of the things you can be focusing on are. Again, we're always going back and forth between these stages, but I do think that can be a really helpful approach to dialing, dialing in and refining what to focus on with the stage that you're currently at. And, you know, the other piece to this that I think is super important is like thinking about what scale do you want your practice of herbal medicine to be? You know, the way I see it, I think there's, um, well, first of all, I think there's the important delineation of is herbalism like a hobby of yours? Is it like, oh, I just want to use some simple home remedies for myself and maybe for my family for just the common, you know, coughs, colds, cuts and scrapes and a little first aid stuff and just the things that come around the bend, maybe some sleep issues, like the really simple kind of easy stuff to deal with and like, that's it, I'm good. Or is it like, Herbalism is your career path. It's what you want to do for a living. You want to serve the plants, serve the people, serve the planet. And herbalism is like what you were put here to do. I think getting clear on that is really, really important because that's going to really determine kind of the scale of your studies. Um, it's going to determine... Um, yeah, how much time and money and energy you invest into your herbal education um, and what level you want to get to in terms of that practice. So the way I think of it is you have kind of the simplest uh, scale, which is like just using herbs for yourself and for your family. Oftentimes that's just attending to, yeah, the common things that come around the bend, the things that you, you know, that most people would probably just treat with like an over-the-counter drug um, that instead of that, you'd like to use an herb. Um, so yeah, the kind of the more home herbalist, family herbalist, you know, is kind of what I see as that first scale. The second scale is what I think of as more of like community herbalist, right? Of like people that want to, you know, help their community a little bit more, but it's like a little less... Um, I would say they're a little more trained than the family or home herbalist, probably more equipped to be able to tackle more issues and problems. Um, but it's also not as probably, I guess, professional level as what we would say, like the clinical herbalist, right? And this is where someone, um, to me is you know, you're seeing clients day in and day out, right? That that's your job is you Typically, we'll have uh, some form of clinic or office space, whether that's out of your home or rented a place in town or whatever. Um, but you're seeing people day in and day out, and that's really your work um, is, is working with clients in that way. So those are. I feel like it's important to think about what scale do you want your practice to be at because that's going to really determine kind of what choices you make in terms of your educational pathway as an herbalist. And then, you know, there's lots of different kinds of herbalists. There's lots of different ways to support yourself as an herbalist for those of you that maybe want to be able to make a living as an herbalist. Um, you know, there's things like growing plants and uh, wild crafting plants. There's making medicine, um, which can be a little bit of a complicated career path with the, you know, the FDA regulations, at least here in the United States. I don't know how it is in other countries, but that can sometimes be a little bit intimidating for a lot of folks. Uh, but yeah, you can you can make products, you can see clients, right? You can have a clinical practice, that's how people support themselves as an herbalist. And there's also education, um, which is how many herbalists also are able to support themselves through you know, teaching classes and workshops and writing books and, um, you know, teaching programs and things like that, right? So that's kind of the way I tend to see it. So I feel like it's really important to think about that too, of like, do you really love being out in the mountains, wild crafting herbs? If that's what you love to do, don't feel like you should be in clinical practice if that's not what you want to do. Um, Right? It's like, what do you want to do? What do you see yourself doing? How do you foresee yourself working with the plants? And I think it's really important to think about that kind of stuff so that you end up 
doing what you love doing. Um, don't just do something because everybody else does it. Oh, well, everyone's a clinical herbalist, so I guess I need to do that. Well, if in your heart of hearts, you don't have the calling to see people and work with people and help people that way, you probably shouldn't do that, right? Because you're going to be miserable doing it. <laughs> like You want to be happy in the work that you're doing as much as possible. And so I feel like it's really important to think about these things, right? What scale, what level are you at? Are you just getting started? Have you been at it a while? Uh, or have you already been, you know, clinically practicing for a really long time? Like, what are the things you need to focus on to get to that next level? And then thinking about like what scale, what is the goal of that next level? Like if you were to be at the most comfortable place of like, ah, I've made it, I've made it, which is such a, you know, maybe a, maybe that never happens inside a human being. At least it doesn't for me. Um, there's always another mountain to climb, right? Uh, but what does that scale look like? You know, and then, and then that's going to really help to kind of determine your pathway of study and practice and experience as you move forward on your herbalism journey. But, you know, one of the things that I think is essentially universal, no matter what scale practice you want to be, home herbalist, community herbalist, clinical herbalist, no matter whether you're a beginner, you're intermediate, or you're advanced, what's the number one thing I mentioned in all of those that you got to do? It's study your Materia Medica, right? No matter where you're at or what you want to do as an herbalist, you got to know your herbs, right? And to me, it is uh, the consistent and kind of disciplined study of Materia Medica that really makes great herbalists great. They know their remedies. They understand what they do in the body. They understand the indications for when to give it. They understand the contraindications of when not to give it. They know how to formulate with it. They just have an understanding of that herb. They don't just have knowledge of the herb. They have an understanding. They really know it by heart. And I think that disciplined and consistent study of Materia Medica is one of the most important things that any and every herbalist really needs to do. And, you know, one of the ways that we really support people here at the School of Evolutionary Herbalism in that most noble pursuit of learning herbal medicine is through our monthly subscription program, Materia Medica Monthly. And so I just want to take a moment to share with you a little bit about what we have here at the School of Evolutionary Herbalism, some of our programs, our offerings. So you can, if, if you know, throughout the last six weeks, what I've been sharing with you feels right, feels good, you resonate with me and, and my approach, um, I just want to express to you a little bit about some of the courses very, very briefly. I'm not going to go into a whole bunch of depth and an opportunity for you to learn more about them and get some more in-depth free training. So for most of our programs here at the School of Evolutionary Herbalism, we offer a, an in-depth three-part workshop series to kind of give you a little bit of a sneak peek into the program, give you a sense of what kinds of things you'll learn, and, uh, and to just provide some really great, valuable free training for you. And Materia Medica Monthly is hands down our most popular program here. Um, this is a, a, a very... I think they are the most in-depth and comprehensive herbal monographs in the world. And um, you can learn more about it by joining me in, uh, get a free issue of Materia Medica Monthly. You get a monograph on, on uh, what I believe is a very important herb for everyone to know about in this modern era. It is an ancient herb, um, a highly revered herb, um, but with a lot of very important medicinal application for the modern patient. So um, if you are interested in learning more about Materia Medica Monthly, somewhere on this page, probably at the bottom, we're gonna have some opportunities for you to join me in a more in-depth workshop series. Um, I encourage you to sign up for only one at a time, otherwise you'll probably get a whole bunch of emails and it'll get confusing and overwhelming. So um, what I wanna do is share with you about some of the courses here so that you can maybe make a decision that might be well-suited for you um, to get a more in-depth free series and free workshop, um, perhaps to join one of our programs, or if you wanna just stick on the email list and keep uh, getting our free content on the plant path, you're obviously more than welcome to do that. Um, to, me, to me, herbal 
medicine and herbal education should be made available to anyone and everyone. And that's why uh, myself and our whole team here at the School of Evolutionary Herbalism, we work really hard putting out a lot of free content. You know, uh, most of the year we are sharing things for free. Um, and every once in a while we will open up a course for enrollment. Um, but for the most part, what we do here is offer free stuff. Um, cause that's what we believe in. So hopefully you enjoy it. So one of the ways I like to kind of differentiate our courses is in general, we have kind of some of the more esoteric sides of herbal medicine. And then we have a little bit more of the clinically oriented sides of herbal medicine. And I think that's a really good, simple way of thinking it through is like, is that, or what are you more interested in? Like, are you interested in learning about things like, you know, esoteric properties of herbs, um, preparing alchemically, uh, alchemically prepared herbal extracts, maybe understanding astrology and its connection to herbal medicine. Um, that is really kind of more the esoteric side of what we share here. And the main programs that do that are going to be alchemical herbalism, astro herbalism and our botanical constellations program. Um, these are now I say that, but they're also clinical, right? This is not like, even though they're a little more on the esoteric side of things, it's not all woo woo, right? So everything I do again is striving to balance the science and the spirituality. So those courses are clinically oriented. You are learning tons of materia medica, you're learning anatomy and physiology, but the orientation of it, is a little bit more on the esoteric side of things. On the on the other side, we have the clinical aspects of our of our programs, which I would say our main clinically oriented programs are going to be things like the Vitalist Herbal Practitioner Program. That is really geared towards you getting everything you need to start being able to work with clients as a home family herbalist, community herbalist, and clinical herbalist or clinical herbalist, however you want to approach it. Um, and Materia Medica Monthly, you know, these two programs work very well together. And I believe that that is a really good pathway for people to take if your goal is to really work one on one with clients to provide healing to them through the power of the plants. But again, that said, Every monograph in Materia Medica Monthly, I go into psycho-spiritual properties of the plants, esoteric dynamics of the plants, the planetary rulerships of the plants, the elemental rulerships of the plants, right? Vitalist Herbal Practitioner Program, there's medical astrology in there, right? I talk about spagyric preparations a little bit in there. Um, so again, it's very hard for me to kind of separate them because all of the programs have esoteric and clinical applications. Um, but that is one way that I kind of like to orient them so you have a sense for kind of what pathway might be right for you. Um, the other way is if you're a beginner, like if you are brand new to herbal medicine, the, the programs that I would say would be best for you to start with would be Materia Medica Monthly, right? To just get your feet wet. There's some great foundational principles of herbal medicine in there with, you know, medicinal actions and constitutional systems and the taste of herbs and herbal energetics, not to mention tons of monographs of the herbs. And that's just a great way to get started. We've got lots of beginners in there. I think it's one of our more beginner friendly courses. Um, Elemental Herbalism is another really great beginner friendly course. It introduces some good fundamental principles of holistic herbal medicine. You learn act herbal actions, energetics, constitutional systems, some a lot of Materia Medica, but it's all through the lens of the elements. So there's a really great foundation there in seeing the connection between the, the physical and the spiritual side of people and plants as well. I love elemental herbalism. It's a little bit of a shorter course too. So for those of you that maybe just want to dip your toes in a little bit, um, it's a little bit less of um, you know a commitment of time and resources than some of our bigger courses. Now, if you feel like you're more in the advanced side of things, intermediate, intermediate to advanced side, I would say the two courses that are gonna be best for you would be Alchemical Herbalism and or the Vitalist Herbal Practitioner Program. Now, to me, Alchemical Herbalism is really lays down kind of the foundation of my approach to herbalism. And then the Vitalist Herbal Practitioner Program takes that 
and applies it to a deeper level in a clinical and a therapeutic context. You don't need to do Alchemical to do Vitalist, right? Um, they are standalone courses, um, but to me, these are going to be the more advanced courses for people. That said, we've had people brand new to herbalism that are like, I want to be a clinical practitioner and just dive straight into the Vitalist course and they get tons out of it. Same goes with Alchemical Herbalism. We've had people that are totally new to herbalism go through that course and they get a ton out of it. And I think the reason for that is that in everything that I do, I really strive to teach in a way that can bring things down to a level where anyone can understand it. I'm not the kind of teacher that throws out big words without defining it. I really try to keep that beginner's mindset present um, because the last thing I wanna do is talk over anyone's head or confuse anyone or overwhelm them. So I just wanted to give you a little brief introduction to some of our courses here at the School of Evolutionary Herbalism. Again, scroll on down to the bottom we're gonna have some places on this page for you to kind of pick your pathway, right? Which which of these seems the most intriguing to you? Which What would you like to learn more about? Um, if you do so, just drop your name and email in there, even though you're already on the list. All that's gonna do is gonna plug you into a free workshop series to give you a more in-depth uh, training uh, around whatever that course is that you're most interested in. No pressure, you don't gotta sign up for any of these more in-depth free workshops and just continue on getting our free content here on the plant path, but I did wanna make sure you know that there's ways for you to go a little bit deeper in some more in-depth workshops here and an opportunity to, to join and enroll in uh, one of our programs. Again, don't sign up for too many of those though where you're gonna get a lot of emails and it might get overwhelming and confusing. So. Maybe just do one at a time. And you know, all of this really comes back to your calling, you know? This is, to me, herbal medicine is a calling. Like people get into herbal medicine because there's something in your heart that called out to you from the heart of nature and it touched you and the plant stood up in the forest and called your name and thank you for listening to that for heeding that call because i think that is a really important part of the of your plant path is remembering that calling remembering what it is that brought you to the plants remembering those first herbs that really spoke to you, those first herbs that had a profound healing effect on you, the first herbs that really spoke to you. Remember those things because this is your story of healing and transformation. This That is your plant path, is your healing and your transformation through the power of the plants. And as you heal and transform yourself, you're gathering all of this medicine along the way. Those plants are becoming a part of who you are and it kind of builds up. This inner forest grows within you and... I think for many, there comes a point where those plants want to help other people. Those plants want to work through you to reach out into the world and bring their healing power to the people that need that help. To be that is like, in a way, it's like the ecological function of the herbalist is to unite the human and the plant kingdoms, to unite the world and the earth, and to bring them together in a way that is healing, in a way that is bringing us humans closer to our, in our connection to nature. Because I think that's one of the most important things that, that we need to do right now, uh, that we need to deepen our connection to the natural world. We need to heal our hearts. We need to heal our minds. We need to come back to the things that are important in this life the, the water that gives us life, the earth that gives us life, the air that we breathe that comes from the plants with every breath that gives us life, the life from the sun, the moon, the stars, all of this nature that gives us life. We have to come back into connection with it and ourselves. And I think that's something that we can help other people to do too because it gives people a, a, a more fulfilled life. It brings them happiness, it brings them joy, it, it heals them, it teaches them, it makes them more human in my opinion. It makes them uh, ha have a closer connection to this life. Um, and I think that's really needed in this modern world and in our modern culture. 
So I would be honored to serve you here in whatever capacity that I can on your pathway and your healing and transformational journey for yourself so that you can help other people to do that as well. So you can do what you can do to make the world a better place, even if that just means healing yourself. Even that just means using elderflower for your child's fever rather than suppressing it with an aspirin and they are more vital and more healthy. To me, that's healing the world. That's The child is a part of the world. You're a part of the world. And when we heal ourselves or another person through a plant, we do contribute to the healing the world. I don't say that as like this, you know, generalized statement because everyone says it. Like, I really believe that. Like, to me, that is truth that we are a part of nature. We want to heal the earth. We're a part of this earth. Heal ourselves. That's healing the earth. Heal another person. That's healing the earth. And so um, I would be truly honored to help you in that most noble pursuit of healing yourself so you can better heal others through the power of herbal medicine. That's what I'm all about. And that's what our whole team is about here at the School of Evolutionary Herbalism. So I just want to say thank you for being a student because to me, you are a student because you're here listening to me because you're a part of um, you know, our, our free student list. And whether you choose to join one of our more in-depth free workshop series and enroll in a course is totally up to you. Either way, I'm grateful to you and I wanna just say thank you for that. And um, I really do though hope to see you in one of our more deep dive courses whether it's alchemical herbalism or astro herbalism or botanical constellations or elemental herbalism or the vitalist herbal practitioner program or it's materia medica monthly it would be a real honor to have you be uh, in the deeper layer of the evolutionary herbalism world um, and if it's not for you that's okay too uh, feel free to continue to enjoy all of our updates on the plant path over at, here on our website at evolutionaryherbalism.com, on the YouTube channel, on the podcast, the dailies on Facebook and Instagram. And uh, we just hope to serve you well on your plant path. So thanks very much for joining me here. I hope you enjoyed your introduction to the world and paradigm of evolutionary herbalism. And until the next one, take care. <laughs>